Hello, uh, welcome to the eighth module of the course in uh, Applied Linguistics of uh, the UGC program called e Shala in Linguistics. This module uh, is called CALL or C-A-L-L or Computer Assisted Language Learning. In the last module, you must have seen how a small bit of technology can revolutionize the whole field of language learning or second language acquisition. I mean, the moment magnetic tape and the language lab comes into place, there are a series of advantages that follow. If you have a classroom teacher and the classroom teacher tells you something, uh, there is no way you can go back to it. You can go back to your notes, which is not the same thing. But on the magnetic tape, you could listen to that piece or that sentence or to that paragraph hundred times if you wanted and it will stay the it will stay the same so there were advantages associated with technology in modern times uh, in the sort of later part of the 20th century there was a major breakthrough in technology with uh, with the advent of computers and mainframes and uh, you know finally in modern times uh, you notice that a simple thing like a mobile phone for, you know is is good enough to do almost anything in the world anywhere so the technology has moved from a simple invention like uh, the magnetic tape to, or, or a phonogram to something that you can do all your analysis on a simple laptop like this. You have a laptop and you can do, you, this is your language lab also. This is your phonetic analysis lab also. So you can do everything on a simple uh, laptop or even on a mobile with a, with a broad screen. And there are hundreds of other things, you know, uh, iPads and you know, tabs and, you know, no end to what technology has done. So there is, uh, it is the, when we say computer assisted language learning and what are its implications for language learning, we are talking of the interface between man and machine. That there is this interface which has brought about a revolution in the world of uh, language learning. Uh, and computer based instruction uh, is uh, presented by means of primarily through computers and uh, the beginnings you know this uh, the beginnings part you see on your screen you know this has been put on your screen for your advantage and uh, you will see that the beginnings of the modern kinds of the computer revolution into into language this man-machine interface revolution in the world of language took place at the University uh, of Stanford, Stanford University in California and the international, you know, the famous IBM, which is International Business Machine Corporation. Uh, they sort of collaborated and more and more you find that departments of uh, linguistics, departments of cognitive science, departments of psychology, and departments of computer science are working with each other to do new things by the day, every day. Now, an association between uh, computer scientists who are working toward artificial intelligence and linguists are trying to map the human mind in terms of language acquisition. It's hard work, there's a lot of hard work involved in, in all this. Uh, but that's what they are trying to do and uh, there has been some success but a lot of work has gone into this collaboration between computer scientists and linguists in different domains of language uh, and language teaching. So the first thing that happened there was called CAI, not CIA, but CAI that is Computer Assisted Instruction. That's how it started. and there was a linear presentation of information. See, that's what computers can do easily. 
So one cut, 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 and then put them together. They, they, can, they can do that very easily. And that's how it started. You know, uh, things had to be arranged in a logical manner. They could be presented one by one. And, uh, you know, you could do a lot of drills. Um, the machine could be multiplied very easily. And, uh, you know, you could, so many students could do practice. This was followed by what was called Plato system. And Plato system is programmed logic for automatic teaching operations. This was the system which is on your screen. Uh, another early CAI kind of system initiated at the University of Illinois and for, for higher learning. And uh, mainframe computer could have 100 terminals. So you could have 1000 terminals. So you could have a big computer and you could have the mainframe computer would fit into a big hall. You know, that is what a mainframe computer was at that time, which is now sort of changed into a small uh, laptop. You know. uh, it could be attached to 1000 terminals, so 1000 students could see the same thing at the same time. And uh, by 1985, over 100 plateau systems were operating across United States. So you can imagine, you know, that uh, the email system also was first introduced to Plato. Today, you know, everybody is on the email. So you prepare one lesson. You just finish one lesson with the click of a mouse. It, it is all over the world. Anybody can access it. Anybody can see it. Anybody can learn anything from it. So technology has really brought about a major revolution. Uh, the sort of uh, cheaper and more powerful what is called a PC, a personal computer, happened in the 1980s. And that dramatically increased the use of CAI, that is computer instru uh, assisted instruction. So by 1980, only 5-6% of the schools had, you know, computers or CAI kind of stuff or Plato kind of stuff. But by the end of the decade, that means within 10 years, all the schools, that means by 1990, all the schools in the United States uh, were fully equipped with all kinds of computers and all kinds of uh, technology assistance. And this was a major uh, breakthrough for uh, language teaching. On your screen, again, you can see that what technology did across the boundaries. Uh, with the email happening and, you know, every time you look for a website, you type www. So that is World Wide Web. Now, I think that's the most dramatic thing that could happen to us that you have something called the World Wide Web and you can access anything uh, happening anywhere in the world sitting on your table on a small laptop. And you could store huge amounts of information. Now you get a small Kindle and you can store 5,000 books on that Kindle and they're always there. Okay, just on a small sort of, uh, you know, tablet kind of thing. Uh, uh, the countries like India started thinking of, you know, following that tradition and, and, you know, getting into that kind of technology, which will help them to bring technology into education and into language teaching. So the government of India set up the national program on technologically enhanced learning as a part of its effort. And we hear of GSAT-3 and which is now known as EDUSAT. Uh, and EDUSAT is there now in every district, perhaps in every block. You can upload a program and disseminate it, for example, from the NCRT in, in Delhi or from IGNU in Delhi. I know that you can, or, or from IIT Chennai, you can stand in an auditorium, have a workshop, and that workshop can be transmitted throughout the country and you can have a two-way 
this is the interesting part you can have a two way audio video feedback system so people can ask you questions and you can answer their questions on the uh, on this two way kind of dialogue through technology now call of course heavily draws from other related fields such as educational psychology artificial intelligence computational linguistics instructional design machine learning cognitive science and and you know second language acquisition research what are the advantages i try to mention some of them main advantages of uh, of a language teaching method like call computer assisted language learning it has various manifestations you know it have very different names uh, but the main uh, advantage i think is learning efficiency you know, the efficiency is enhanced you know the time gap is reduced uh, it can be very effective in, in, in at least for example you know i want to i want to share a story with 500 students you know who are in touch with me so it will take me half an hour I, you know, to give them time to read that story and then we can begin a dialogue and we can be connected on skype for example and we can all talk and we can now on talk on facebook i mean there are hundreds and thousands of ways talk on viber i mean there is there is no limit on which you can talk uh the most important thing that has happened with technology is that it has empowered people through access this i think to my mind is the most important contribution that technology has made this kind of technology not the technology that makes the nuclear bombs but this kind of technology has made to mankind is that languages were disappearing languages were dying you know dominant languages were eliminating smaller languages tribal languages but this technology has empowered those people so much that if i want to listen to a bhojpuri or a bundeli song i just have to log on to the computer and i can listen to the songs listen to their plays listen to their short stories so all those things are being preserved because of the assistance coming from technology and i think this is phenomenal this thing is really phenomenal and and we need to make as much use of it as possible so that technology has made access to authentic data possible and this is very important for language learning another thing is you don't need to buy a textbook you don't need a very often need a teacher you may not need a classroom that means it's very convenient it has because of all these reasons it has enhanced the motivation of many people and there are sort of you know various other advantages all those advantages you know i can phone somebody i can call somebody on the viber and check the pronunciation of something or check the accuracy of something find a translation you know a new word in the translation i do all all kinds of things with technology uh the other thing that has happened is that it is technology that has made it possible for second language practices to be consistent with research in second language acquisition i think that's a very important aspect we have been saying if you remember in the earlier modules that language teaching must be discourse based we should have a holistic approach to language teaching and that we should have audio visual materials or or what is known as language from the material world language from the outside world we should have that kind of language brought into the classroom so authentic authentic language should be brought into the classroom and it should look like it has made a virtual classroom possible and individuals can have uh, you know their own data their own authentic text and can discuss it online or offline with the teacher <clears throat> still in spite of all these uh, you know great advantages i think there are some serious limitations we have been trying technology in in language teaching i think there are serious uh, limitations and all these limitations are on the screen 
in front of you. Uh, you can see them and I'll just read them out for you and maybe explain them if need be. Uh, the first issue is that all this equipment, even a good mobile might cost you 30,000, 35,000 if you want good functions with it, if you want readability, if you want good pictures, if you want good animation, then it's very expensive. To set up a laptop is very expensive. So if you really want good technology, it costs you a lot of money. To set up a language lab might cost you millions of dollars. You know, it's not, it's not cheap. It doesn't come cheap. And then I explained to you the disadvantages of the language lab. I think what is most significant is that what can happen in face-to-face -face contact, what can happen in peer group interaction, and what can happen with the teacher can never ever happen with technology. That kind of learning, that clarity of learning, that intensity of learning doesn't happen with technology. That happens with individuals. There is a substantial loss of creativity and a substantial loss of imagination because of that kind of human contact, uh, because that kind of human contact is lost. You see, how do you get new software? Better the software, more expensive it is. Where do you find it? And it is criminal to to steal that software. Think about it. People copy that software, use it, and you know there are all kinds of problems, uh, all kinds of copyright problems associated with it. Uh, but I think the most serious disadvantage of uh, technology has been that. Uh, Machines tend to produce a template and that template picks up, you know, some currency and everybody wants to fit into that template, you know, whenever he or she gets a chance. Uh, this is dangerous because then new kinds of things are not happening. New kinds of poems are not being written. New kinds of stories will not get written because, you know, cut and paste has become a standard methodology for all kinds of knowledge creation where zero knowledge is created. You know, and, and it's criminal to do that kind of a thing. But uh, I think technology encourages that, uh, not that it intentionally <laughs> encourages that, but human beings are made that way and technology makes it possible. So to conclude this module, one can say that if technology is used carefully, and if technology is used realizing its limitations, then it can really be put to great use and could be of great benefit to mankind and uh, to language learning. Thank you.